Okay, so I wanted to bring up a uh, bail the topic of bail real real quick. So, um, yeah, this is a this is from the Prison Policy Initiative, um, a National Criminal Justice Think Tank. Uh, this is an article that they have here about. Um, detaining the poor, the bail system. So essentially, uh, bail has been around in, in European common law for a while, which for if you don't know, a lot of the American law kind of goes back into into common law in England and whatnot. But uh, essentially, the, the big thing here is a lot of people know that like bail is when you, know, you get arrested and you, you end up in jail and bail's, you know, what you post to get out. So essentially, bail is a uh, is kind of like an insurance. the The big thing is bail is not supposed to be punitive. It's not supposed to be a punishment. I'll come back to that after because that's something that people argue that it's become. Uh, bail is uh, guaranteed as as a, as a constitutional right by the Eighth Amendment. So what the purpose of bail is essentially insurance that you're going to show up to your court date. So like I said. Uh, it's it's not supposed to be punishment. It's just supposed to be an and deposit a safety deposit that you're going to show up to court, and then when the offender shows up to court, in theory, at the end of the court proceedings, as long as they show up, they get that money back. Um, so, one way that bail creates this this two tiered system and and the criminal justice system, the haves and the haves nots is is one based on just the the, the potential or possibility to pay bail. So bail is handled differently in different jurisdictions, but essentially what you'll have is you'll have some officer of the court that makes this decision of can you uh, can you be released on your personal recognizance? Personal recognizance be means that you're being released on your word. They're just saying like, look, we trust you that you'll show up. You're being released personal recognizance or by by cash. They'll set them some number or uh, or denied bail. Them being denied bail would, would likely have to go to to a court to determine that they're either a flight risk, so they're they're likely to leave the jurisdiction, or they're a danger to the public. Um, so the problem here is 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 one you just have to do with the access of of bail really only for most people that that we're not dealing with a, a severe like violent criminal because being denied bail would be only something if there was like a very serious violent crime bail really only applies to the poor because if you're rich you, you don't even think about it it's just like uh, I heard, heard this anecdotal story that that somebody was like talking to a rich friend and they were driving around a city and they said, uh, "Oh no, you can't park there because the friend who was rich is going to park and, and pull into a spot." And they said, "No, I can park there. It's just sixty dollars, right?" And so that's kind of how the wealthy will think about the criminal justice system: is like, yes, I can do these things. It's it's just like a bill. Um, so bail really only does affect in in a, in a severe way the people that money is tight or working class people because otherwise you wouldn't have to worry about that. So the problem is that bail is generally based off of um, the quote unquote severity of the crime or the record and not based off of the person's ability to pay. So what that uh, would mean is you the the system is not taking into account that that person's ability it's not taking into account their assets it's not um something that's like a, oh this is one percent of of your money made over time so you can have people that are poor uh struck with very high uh, absurd bail amounts that would be like a uh, hundred thousand dollars no way that you're going to come have show up with that in cash so you could actually argue that that type of bail is unconstitutional considering that the eighth amendment does uh does argue that bail is a right and so if you have bail that's excessively high that that no reasonable person would amount to be able to to come up with then you're going to have that issue some i've heard also talked about move to um abolish cash bail yeah, so that would be uh, basically having bail arrangements that would be alternatives such as um, in Massachusetts, we don't have bail bondsmen. So bail bondsmen are, are essentially like loan sharks that, that, li that lend for bail money. The reason that you don't have a bail shark or bail bondsman rather in a state like Massachusetts is because we have a cash bail alternatives where the person that that's being released out on bail has an arrangement where they can pay like a lower percentage direct and that that takes care of their bail situation. Yeah, I mean, another another uh, way to think about the bail is is that so you have uh, jails and prisons. So in prisons, you have people that are being uh, that have been convicted. Jails are generally uh, split up into two sections. One is that people that are convicted for misdemeanors, 
Jail is also sometimes known as house corrections, and they're people that are doing shorter term sentences. Jails also hold pretrial defendants. So that makes up about 70% of, of jail populations. And so those are people that are in jail but awaiting trial sentencing they're still going through the court proceedings they are legally presumed innocent that that's what you have in the fifth amendment innocent until proven guilty but they are incarcerated uh, waiting for bail uh, so this is a, a reason that that we need to reevaluate the, the bail system have it be more of a, of a not not really um for anything other than than a basic deposit it shouldn't be something that that it, it's being used right now in, in the way that is punishment it's punitive um, and we need to definitely reevaluate that thinking that because essentially now it's just used to uh, judges can essentially have this huge control over over people that are in the in the trial system and, and they are innocent. So, yeah, I mean, basic, basically just a, a quick way to go in here and talk about how the bail system and, and money has, has stymied and created this 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 real inequality in the criminal justice system for the for the working class and the poor. Uh, just one more graphic. Uh, just we, we, we definitely know that the U.S. Uh, has has this large incarceration rate. There's this graphic down here. So here, um, this is comparing Massachusetts and founding NATO countries on the incarceration rates. This is rates per 100,000 people. So uh, if you look at the country that's closest to us down the UK there, 129 per 100,000 people. Um, if you just look and see the United States is, is vastly ahead. Uh, Massachusetts, where we live, uh, is, is at 275, so lower than the national average. But still, we can just see here that, that people being incarcerated is, is a major issue, the amount of people that are incarcerated in the U.S., and that's for nonviolent crimes. Bail is a big part of that because that's that's counting people, all the people that are incarcerated, including those people that are there pre-trial. They're innocent and they'll proven guilty, but they can't make cash bail or cash bail or other bail alternatives hasn't been made available to them. Uh, so just definitely something to think about because while we're not getting into it in this topic, uh, the 13th Amendment is that amendment that basically, you know, allows uh, prison jail labor that, that's essentially almost very similar to chattel slavery labor. And that all comes down into whether or not you can be uh, denied a bail because, like like I said, for the, the 13th Amendment, it's not only that kind of, of really – unfair working environment that that's being handed down to convicted felons which would be bad enough because that, that's not saying that convicted felons deserve that they do not but you can have people that are in jail innocent uh were, were not able to make their their bail but they're sitting there as an innocent person in jail being being used for that prison type labor and so as i understand it the under the 13th amendment they can actually be be forced to work that's correct. They can be compelled to work, and they can be withheld services within the within the prison. Not basic life services, but a quality of life services such as access to the commissary, the food store, uh, and and privileges. They can have privileges withheld in in in, in jail, and up to and including can be put into solitary confinement for refusing to work, which a lot of people in the prison abolishment uh, movement consider to be torture, solitary confinement. There's the whole basic concept of, of just trying to eliminate as much incarceration as, as we can. I think as a movement, that's what we need to be arguing for, is that the, the only people that should be incarcerated long term, if for years, are, are the rare breed of criminal that that are violent and truly dangerous to the public i i would estimate personally that that's a, a few percent of the people that are currently incarcerated and then for for the for the rest of the people i would say what we would want to do is is have some programs that are short-term intensive incarceration programs for say a few months where they would be in a, in, a, in a supervised environment learning job and life skills to help them rebuild their life when they get out. Again, not having people parked in, in jails for in prisons for years for nonviolent offenses, but uh, having a, a brief period in a correctional facility that helps them build up and reestablish when they get out. And of course, tie, tie it much more into the mental health system and the health system in general. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that I always bring up and tell people is that the number one provider of mental health care services in the United States is the Cook County Jail in Chicago, Illinois. That is the number one provider of mental health care services, not a hospital, is the Cook County Jail. So the, the, the criminal justice system has, has also become 
um, a catch-all for, for mental health and social services, which is a big problem. The real driver of, of crime is, is poverty. Absolutely. Yeah, poverty should be looked at as a disease and, and as, as that. As a societal failure. As a societal failure, yeah. I also like to look at it as, as in terms of like of a disease, though, because I do think that poverty causes mental uh, mental health problems and and substance use. Men- mental health issues do not cause people to to do criminal behaviors, but substance use can. Um, so you know that's that's and and substance use and mental mental health they 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 do kind of coincide. I guess what I'm just trying to say is is I I'm I'm absolutely not pushing a narrative that people with mental health problems are are likely to commit crimes. It's not the case, at all. In fact, people with mental health problems are far more likely to be victims of crimes than than perpetrators of crimes. But yeah, all of those social issues that come with poverty can can create um, the quality of life crimes that people get incarcerated for all the time, especially in, in states with three strikes laws like California. Three felonies, no matter what they are, will get you a, a lifetime sentence. And also the when, when dealing with people that are criminal justice involved, that can also be a good uh, impetus for jobs programs mm-hmm. because th- those those are jobs like working uh, in, in counseling and, and providing services and helping people out and also doing security and, in, in, you know, housing facilities and stuff like that, that can be awesome because, you know, de- definitely, you know, like you're talking about people that are of a certain wealth class, they get lots of chances and lots of opportunities. And when, when they mess up, they get a little slap on the wrist and, and are kind of given some guidance. And that's something that we can be doing with, with, with people. And so um, the, the key isn't, isn't to be like, like so angry about that, that you want to tear the whole system down. I, I think, the, the key is to demand that that level of of care uh, and, and of chances for, for everyone yeah the definitely. minimum oh yeah the, definitely. the floor i agree